Hello again, everyone. I'm Tom Dorado. Welcome to the Bob Simmons Show. Oklahoma State journeyed to Lincoln, Nebraska this past weekend to take on the Big Red of the North. We'll talk about that matchup. We'll introduce you to a very important member of the Cowboy football family. I know you've seen him before. This week, you'll have a chance to hear from him as well. Jamal Fobbs and Terrence Richardson, who both had solid afternoons and sold out Memorial Stadium Saturday, will visit with us on our Get to Know the Cowboys segment. And we'll have all that and a lot more for you this week, so stay with us. We're back after this opening. Time out. The Bob Simmons Show is brought to you by Philip 66, the performance company. Southwestern Bell, the exclusive communications choice of the OSU Cowboys. By Oklahoma Tank Line, a proud sponsor of Oklahoma State Athletics. By the Johnson Auto Family, just a short drive from high prices. And by the OSU Posse, reminding you to wear orange and purchase officially licensed OSU products. What's your idea of a dream? Well, welcome back to the show. And Bob, tough trip to Lincoln this past weekend, but it's a classic example, obviously, of giving that team a crack. They take it, and all of a sudden you're swimming upstream. Uh, yeah, it was, Tom. Uh, when we got to, to Lincoln, we really wanted to start fast as a football team. And one of the things that we felt that we could not do is come out and turn the ball over. Uh, couldn't have any... Uh, special teams uh, miscues and mm -hmm. when we got up there uh, for our first play that we start with uh, was a was a fumble but uh, we really had good field position. How you, about you, this you welcome you had getting now. off the bus? I, really, I thought that was uh, well orchestrated uh, the fact that our OSU fans was there in support. I know the team really appreciated the fans being there and uh, you're looking at a team that in my estimation uh, really wanted to play this game came out be mostly involved in this ball game getting ready to start up you can see our crowd we had great support in that uh, in that in that sea of uh, red there. Uh, this is the kickoff of the of the game, and uh, I thought that uh, our team went down, uh, played with a, a lot of enthusiasm. Here you can see the kickoff where mm -hmm. our guys are going down there. About three or four guys around the ball making the tackle, and that's pretty much what we wanted them to start inside the 20 yard line. Yeah, you can't script uh, it any better. Can't than script this, it any so. better. Uh, the quarterback is a couch is a good quarterback. They come out here with a heck of a throw on on third down and come back with a reverse. Uh, you can see our guys are rallying to the ball with Newcomb. Our defense at the early part of the game is flying around, knocking back. And, and for the most part, the first part of the game, we really got, uh, got them under control. You see about three or four guys around the ball. Defensively, we're swarming to the ball. Nice job on the, on the option assignments there, uh, because that's the one thing that we talked about doing this game is option responsibilities. Uh, we end up forcing them to a kick and got great field position. You see T. Rich here do a good job. Now, I thought that he would step over this guy right here. Almost, I thought, he was, huh? thought he was a better athlete than that. <laughs> uh, but for the most part, we start out in great field position, Tom. Come out in the formation that which they didn't recognize, and you can see that, uh, that the tailback uh, did not have to hand off. And uh, again, come out first play of the ball game, start off with a turnover, gave them the ball right back. Uh, they come out with a fake reverse. And our defense do a pretty good job up to that point. I thought got, this coming they, up here is the next big well, play. Well, this is the big play here because they, they got them in the third, third and 11. And that's where we had to, to really come up with a third down stop. And they ran a crossing route here and bad. had a little bit too much time to, to throw the ball. And Couch did a good job of sticking it in there. And they get a first down. They get it down on the goal line. And then uh, defense is a little bit out of position and they punch it in. Then we come back offensively. Uh, you can see where we picked up three or four yards on the, on the, on the first drive, come back inside and, and pick up about four or five there. We, we get to a situation where it's about third and three, uh, third and two, which is what we wanted to do, get in third and one, third and two. Uh, fourth and one early in the ball game here. Uh, it was fourth and inches. We decided to go forward. We get it. We keep that drive alive. Uh, and we come back in the next series here. This is after a short punt gave him a short drive for another score. Right. Uh, this is a key play. Well, here. this is a key play. Seven nothing. Uh, we talk about special teams and we talk about assignment. Uh, we had uh, one guy did not carry out his assignment. Uh, we, we end up giving him the ball back there on the ten yard line, and that's two quick scores mm -hmm. with, within a, probably a, a five or ten minute period. They came back and scored again, uh, and so that that first half. Uh, we didn't play as well as, as we would have liked to play. We go in at halftime and try to make some adjustments. What's the message at halftime? You're in a big hole. Obviously, try to come out and play better. Yeah, well, the, the message at halftime is just what you said. We had to individually look at ourselves. And I, told, I challenged the teams, I want to judge you on how you're going to play the second half as a team and individually. 
Uh, and for the most part, the, the team came out the second half. We were to receive the football. Uh, came out, you can see Jay does his, takes the ball. I think he gets back to the, about the 25-yard line. Wasn't much there. Uh, we push it to the, about the, the 25-yard first series. Uh, Jay, I think he's supposed to be our tailback. <laughs> uh, but he get in, uh, but he does something special here. He comes in and uh, it was an ISO play. It makes a nice cut, uh, makes a big run. It really gets us out to around the 50 yard line and that's not bad starting off the second half pick up some momentum you can see he makes a nice cut back to the inside cut back and now he uses his speed uh, to really get up to around the 50 yard line and that's what we need to do run guys out late that's a trick play right there he's out there <laughs> uh, but we, we really start uh, a great field position and now what we got to do is uh, keep that uh, drive alive a big fullback here Kevin Brown comes out and he gets about six or seven yards here and I think we get into a situation right now where we come up short, it's uh, third and uh, one here, and then we go outside, and they do a good job of rallying here, and we talked about that. When time it's third and one, we really want to try to get downhill. Mm -hmm. uh, they force us into a punch situation, but that was the best drive we had to this point, now we go back on defense. And you got them pinned back where you want them. For the most part, in the second half, they had to go the long distance, well, they, did. they didn't they have did. to go in the and, first half. Uh, I think that uh, from the standpoint of getting adjustments at the halftime, our defensive coaches did a pretty good job of getting adjusted, but you can see here uh, we got them stopped in a third down situation and we're our own worst enemy because we come back with a uh, personal foul mm -hmm. and then they run a crossing route which we lose, lose their tight end and we miss tackle uh, and then that's another big play that they had in that drive and they come out and run the option uh, which would, would not sound on an option responsibility. And they come out and, and they score on that on that first drive right. on the second half only because we had mistakes on defense. Of course, we're going to answer this now and pick up a couple of big third downs along the way on this scoring drive right here. Well, and, and that's what we had to do, Tom. You can see Jay had a nice game. He's playing receiver here. We go to the inside, makes a nice catch, uh, gets the first down, run for about 20 yards, comes back, and we, we run a, a draw here, but uh, we got a miss handoff, and then uh, uh, I think this BJ does a good job of improvising. And then what we do, we end up, because of hustle, we, we make a late block, we take the ball back, then we come back out here and we call another quarterback draw for about to get into a third and five situation. Uh, and this is important. I think he, he uh, we go to a slant inside mm -hmm. to Terrence Richardson, makes a good catch here. Uh, and we have to convert on those third downs to keep our drive alive. Second half, we did that. Come back with the reverse, trick play. Uh, Terrence uh, does a good job of getting down the sideline. Thought he was going to score here, but he takes it back down to about the five-yard line. Uh, we come out. And well, this is just Same a play again. reverse, and it just shows you uh, that misdirection at this point in time helps us uh, make a, a, I think that's a nice block by, by Jeff Pachado here. We go down the sideline, and again, uh, that's the kind of plays that we need to have not only in the second half, but in the first half. You know, as you look back and you compare the halves, obviously we well, had better field position, more room to do something with it in the second half. Right. It well, you, you can see here we go for a score. We put Marcellus in and go up high. Uh, it was a nice throw by B.J., nice catch by Marcellus for a touchdown. Uh, but again, those momentum drives is where we have to be a little bit more consistent in doing during the course of the ball game. Obviously, that was our OG&E power play of the game. OG&E proud again to bring you OG&E greatest cowboy fan search. Log on for your chance to win big at www.oge.com. OG&E power at the speed of life. We continue on. Cowboys get on the scoreboard. and That had to be... Certainly encouraging. Uh, this team has never had a quit in it, and no, it had to be uh -uh. encouraging to come well, off the and, deck and that's, have that's the one thing that uh, uh, we talked about doing is not quitting. And uh, we came out with the way to score it was. Uh, you see, our defense is really playing a little bit sound. This is later on in the ball game, and uh, the one thing that uh, we failed to do is give up. And uh, they got uh, the backup quarterback in, but our kids are still playing hard and still playing sound. We forced them into a punt here. And I think T. Richardson did a nice job on, on punt returns all day. He, he makes a nice decision here. I think he picked up about 95 yards, 16-point yard average on returns. Uh, and and that's, that's pretty good here in the Big 12. Uh, this is a nice throw. I think that's Ben Bowling going to uh, Cameron White coming across the middle. We're trying to put a drive alive here. We throw it out to, to Howell. That's a nice throw and catch. Uh, and those are the things that we needed to do. We come back with an inside draw uh, for about three or four yards. And uh, our offense has some rhythm now in terms of running, running and throwing. Uh, they do a good job, but this is a good job by Ben Bowling, uh, improvising, getting the ball to Cameron White for a first down. And those are the kinds of plays we have to continue to have to have 
drives the lives. That's Jay Fobbs running for about five or six yards. Come out, run the option, play for a first down. Uh, and again, it keeps the drive alive, Tom. For a portion of, especially in the first half, you used unbalanced line, extra linemen. You want to explain that? Maybe. Well, but one of the things that we tried to do in this game plan was to create a mismatch, create some double teams uh, with an unbalanced line. Uh, and doing that, doing the part part of that game plan that we did use the unbalanced side. We did that, but we, we had to stay front side on running the ball. Mm -hmm. We ended up cutting back side. But this is Terrence Richardson making a nice, nice catch. Move, huh? uh, nice move, get down for a first down. We get on the five yard line and we go inside with, with Jay, gets it back down to about the four, four yard line. Then we cut back with, with Nathan. He cuts it back and gets it down to the, to the two yard line. Uh, then we run an inside play, which this is what I'm talking about. He should have kept that play a little bit wider. Uh, fourth and goal, uh, and then we decide to go outside. Jay comes in, we run just a basic sweep play, and then he outruns him to the corner. Uh, for a touchdown. Kevin Brown had a nice block on the outside. Kevin Brown had Kevin an excellent block for Put him for, on the ground and allowed to get in. Now just get to the corner. Well, as you look back on this ball game, be the final uh, play that you see here. You'll be talking with Frank Solich here in a second at, at midfield. But as you look back on this, obviously disappointment as far as the team is concerned. But you said it probably best after the game. This is still a good football team oh, it that is, has it a is. ways to go. Well, you know, what we got to do is play better. Uh, we got to execute uh, on both sides of the ball. And, and after the game, we talked about it as a football team. Right now, we're, we're not playing like uh, the OSU is capable of playing. And uh, uh, we talked about talking about that on Monday, but there's a, enough talent on this team to win. And of course, there's a lot of season left. Oh, there's plenty of season left. And what's interesting, when you look at this conference, Tom, everybody got a loss except for two teams. I think uh, Nebraska and K-State. But, uh, you know, Texas Tech beat a and <laughs> last night and uh, uh, Kansas State beat Texas. And so we're right in the mix. We just got to get our act together and start playing. We'll talk about Tech when we get back here in a little bit. You know, whether you're sitting in Lewis Field or you follow the Cowboys on the road, you've seen this gentleman walking the Oklahoma State sideline for the past several seasons. He visits with the players and coaches before, during, and after a football game. He's there for everyone who needs help. No, he doesn't become involved in any of the X's and O's. His message is much more important, much more meaningful to those who hear it. Now we want you to meet John Ware. He's the focus of this week's two-minute drill, brought to you, as always, by the American Residential Group. John, you really seem to enjoy this facet of your ministry. Oh, I love it. It's a great opportunity to serve and to be with some really quality people. It's a, it's a family, you know, the football family at OSU truly is a family. I think people talk that, but I can tell you that it really is like that, Tom. It's wonderful. Tell us how you first became involved with the Cowboy football program. I don't think many people know. Well, I came here uh, 18 years ago, and uh, I came as associate pastor of our church and uh, had been involved uh, with uh, FCA and chaplain uh, with teams, uh, high school teams before I came here, and I came to work with college students and uh, thought I might be able to do that here, and it just didn't work out until uh, Coach Simmons came. Uh, I uh, prayed and asked the Lord for an opportunity to do it because I've always loved doing that kind of thing. When he came, uh, uh, the first time I saw him on TV, uh, I felt like the Lord spoke into my heart and said, you're to serve him and, and serve at the university with these uh, students. Uh, and uh, to make a very long story short, it worked out. I, I got to meet Coach Simmons. He felt the uh, leadership to uh, uh, ask me to be a part of it. And I've uh, been doing it for five years now. Amen. You know, your dealings with the youngsters seem so genuine and also so spontaneous. Well, you know, um, I just, I love them. And, uh, uh, I think they've grown over a period of time to, to trust me and uh, they confide in me and I have a great opportunity to pray with them and uh, encourage them and, uh, and my job is to serve them and I, and I just love doing that and I think that's what makes it spontaneous. It's a relationship and, uh, and I love the relationship. Not many people know that you were actually part of this TV business at one time. That's right. Uh, when I was in seminary, I, uh, I was involved uh, in television, in news production, and uh, did uh, some voiceover work uh, with WFAA TV in Dallas. And uh, got to go to the Cowboy games and shoot some video and to the Ranger games and do that. So I've, uh, uh, that was always a lot of fun. But finally you saw the light, though. Yes, I finally <laughs> wised up to what I really should be doing. 
I know you're truly a fan, one who experiences all the emotions that you can feel on the sideline. Right, I, I get into it. Uh, you know, I don't think it's all wins and losses, but I think if you're going to do something, you should give it all that you have. And uh, on the sideline, I get into it, and I uh, try to encourage the guys, and uh, uh, I... Uh, uh, I'm back and forth, and uh, if they need a cup of water, I give them a cup of water, and if they uh, if they need a towel, uh, I give them a towel, and and again, I, I just try to serve them, and uh, and it's a lot of fun. It's exciting, really exciting. Well, you do a great job. We appreciate it. Thanks for your well, time. Thank you very much, Tom. You know, Tom, uh, John is a he's a servant of the Lord, uh, and since I've been here, he has done an outstanding job with this program with our players. Our players enjoy him. Not only John, but there's another cup of John. John Talley with FCA does a good job for us, too. You know, he's, he's truly a nice fella as well. But did you know he was in TV? Uh, yeah, he was in TV and radio. Uh -huh. yeah. So he might want to be coming over here to host this show. I asked him. He said oh. no. He, he declined. <laughs> he declined. As promised, you're going to meet Jamal Fobbs and Terrence Richardson. When we return to the Bob Simmons Show, don't go away. Welcome back to the show. This Get to Know the Cowboys segment is brought to you by Ron Rakes and the team at the Home National Bank, 324 South Duck in Stillwater. And as promised, our guest today, Jamal Fobbs, Terrence Richardson, both who had solid all-around, all-purpose days at Lincoln. Yeah, they both played well. You know, but Jay and I were just talking, and uh, he told me his father, Lee, played running back. But didn't you tell me you, you're much better than your dad? Ooh. <laughs> I wouldn't say, you know, much better than my father. Well, don't back out I of mean, it now. Nah, I heard you <laughs> say that. Go ahead. No, Jay, I, go ahead. You can say that now, uh, <laughs> you know, nowadays. And, uh, nowadays, but I, huh? But I say, you know, back, you know, when he was in his prime, I would say, you know, he was a better back. He, he was a little bit bigger than I am. You know, Jay, you and Terrence both see a lot of time on the field. And we're talking about all-purpose yards. That's receiving, rushing, taking back kicks. Did that turf up there bother you? Obviously, it didn't bother you too much. What do you think? No, I, I kind of like that turf. Uh, it's much better than the turf you know that we usually play on because it's it's softer. It's got a lot of cushion under it, so it was kind of it was sort of a fast track. Didn't seem to bother your cuts either, huh? No, I mean it was it was a lot of traction on the field. You know, it it felt good. You know, for me personally. Combination of uh, it's it's really turf like they said, but it's it's grass like. Uh, and, you, and you really have to wear special kind of shoes, and I think that's something that uh, we may look into in the future. You got two guys, yeah. when you talk about playmakers, right here. Both guys are. Both guys are, uh, as you just said, Tom, they're always on the field. Uh, you know, Terrence is, is a, yesterday, what do you have, 16 points, yards on and punt returns, and Jay right not now. only does that, but he plays tailback, and he also uh, run back kicks. I'm looking for him to break that long one pretty yeah. soon. That, that will happen, too. <laughs> Too much uh, later, I think, in the season. Before we let you guys go, looking forward to coming home again. I'm sure, huh? Yes, oh, yeah, I love I love playing in front of our crowd. They they make our team play better because they give us that backbone that we need. They so talk to us about the team attitude right now. If you got a pulse on it. Well, uh, I say the teams, uh, you know, is really you know looking for you know some inner confidence you know within itself, and I think you know if we come out, you know and we play well early, you know, that gives us a lot of confidence, you know, for us to come out and play the entire game that way. But uh, I think this week, you know, we're, we're going to come back and, um, you know, we're going to try, you know, to instill that into the team so we can start out better. Play hard at home, huh? Play hard well, at home. We appreciate both <laughs> you guys coming down on your day off. We'll be back to wrap this all up after this final timeout. Welcome back to the show. This week's question from OakState.com, presented by Southwestern Bell, has to do with graduate assistance. Well, one way we get our graduate assistance, Tom, is, is through mail. Uh, some, of the, some of the guys will mail to us. We will look at their resumes. And the other way, it was some of the coaches in the profession will call and let us know. Texas Tech. Texas Tech. 7 o'clock, Saturday night. Good football team. Had a great victory over uh, A&M, just like Jamal Fobb says, in her confidence. we got to start fast at home. Uh, 7 o'clock in front of our fans. Hey, this marks a stretch now where we play four of the next five at home. That's right, Tom. And uh, playing at home, uh, I think T. Rich talked about the playing in front of our crowds. And But the thing we have to do is play. We've got to be fundamentally sound, come out aggressively, and have a good game plan on both sides of the ball. It would be great to see those fans in orange Fans in orange, well, absolutely huh? right. That's all the time we have for this week's show. For Bob Simmons, our entire crew here at Educational Television Services, Jamal Fobbs and Terrence Richardson, Tom Dorado. Goodbye, everybody.